Lost and Found series uh, we're marching through. We're talking about brotherly affection today. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Do you believe in life after addiction? You better believe it. Now, the host of Life After Addiction. Uh, hey, you like, how, you like how that hits? Uh, I saw you about to freestyle over there. I was, I was like, to. okay, let the beat. It drop. was either gonna be rap or do you believe in life at the love, at the love, at the love? I could feel some. We're probably gonna get flagged for that one because my voice is so like share. I believe that's share, right? Is that share? Uh, yes, I think so. Okay, good. What the audience doesn't know is how much Carl hypes you up about your vote. And your it's voice. actually garbage. No, I'm That's not cool. saying that, but That's he cool. like truly hypes you up. Like, dude, he said you had the, the voice of Fergie and Jesus. Yeah, the other day. He, well, okay. Okay. He definitely, he definitely. He, <laughs> okay, hey, we got an awesome episode. Want to explain some things. This is episode number 47. You do seven like this. Yeah, that, that, that threw me off completely, dude. Right. I was like, seven like this. Like? What are you? Are you on Amer- what? Seven, dude. What do you mean? <laughs> That's how like Germans would do it. Have you not seen that movie? It threw me off. Anyway, I love Germans, by the way. Not 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 like Nazi Germany, but I love Germans. But anyways, they do seven like this, oh not this. God. So get your life together, bro. <laughs> anyways, actually, is Crone German? <laughs> Chittister's right. German too. Oh gosh! See, I, t- I told you I like Germans. <laughs> Anyways, we got an awesome episode for you today. We're f- still in the series, the Life After Addiction podcast, Lost and Found series. Uh, we're marching through. We're talking about brotherly affection today. And guys, we really want to apologize. Last week, um, <laughs> an unfortunate learning experience took place. Um, the com- the studio computer just and it's a newer computer. It just went kapoof, and we didn't have everything we needed on the external hard drive backed up. We had a lot of it, but not everything to put the episode out uh, about godliness. It is recorded. We hope that it's saved. Uh, the computer's being worked on by whatever powers to be, the Apple people. We hope that it's saved, and so we're going to move on, and that way we can play that episode because it was really good. It was really powerful when we recorded it. We felt the presence of the Lord. Uh, but if not, we'll hit that one up here in a little bit. Um, also wanted to talk about, we have a break coming up, but I was I was diving into um, – the our, our partners at Life Audio, the Salem Media uh, branch, and I noticed a podcast um, from a man man named Jeremy Stalnecker. And you guys know, if you know anything from my testimony, you know that I have a heart for our warrior class in America, the veterans, the the active military. Uh, and Jeremy has a podcast called March or Die, and I was listening to uh, some of them really. And I'm going to have a, a description, a, a link for this episode. I believe it's How Did We March. Um, I want you guys to go check it out, but he is the CEO of a foundation that serves um, military families, veterans, active service, first responders, really awesome organization. But his podcast and the book's called March or Die as well. It really talks about the process of moving forward, pressing on, and I think it would be a great benefit for you guys to go check out this episode, show him some love, uh, and then start following him, subscribe to his stuff. It's pretty cool. Uh, I, I love that kind of talk. He, he was in the um, 1st Battalion, 5th Marines. It's where this this mindset comes from. He talks about a story he had while in Iraq and really developing this in March. You can't stay stagnant. You have to move on. You have to press on. So that's a little plug for him. I want you guys to go check him out. Um, and it's just in our network. There's a lot of cool podcasts that, that Life Audio does have now. So go check out the link in the, link in the show notes. Man, I'm excited about this episode that we have. Yes, likewise. Yeah. yeah, brotherly affection, man. That's something that needs to be talked about. That's something that God obviously says is important in these principles of overcoming those um, desires that we talk about. But first, hey, let's take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to dive in. It's about to get real, 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 real. <laughs> and we're back <laughs> Dude, that was solid that was hey solid. hey hey <laughs> if you're just listening you're not watching on youtube then you missed out on one of the greatest upsets in the history of paper rock scissors That's right 
And, uh, yeah, I think I have the, the belt right now in this tournament. But, anyways, hey, I'm going to read this. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 3 through 11. We're talking about brotherly affection today and why it's important, how we grow in it. Let me, let me dive in. The Word of God says this. His divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Godliness, by the way, was the episode that we, we missed out on. Uh, it's coming, though. Life and godliness, through the knowledge of Him who called us to His own glory and excellence, by which He has granted to us His precious and very great promises, so that through them you may become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped from the corruption that is in the world because of sinful desires. Mike John. Mm. For this very reason, make every effort to supplement your faith with virtue, and with virtue, knowledge, and with knowledge, self-control, and with self-control, steadfastness, and with steadfastness, godliness. That's the episode you missed. And godliness with brotherly affection today, and brotherly affection with love. For if these qualities are yours and are increasing, they keep you from being ineffective or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For whoever lacks these qualities is so nearsighted that he is blind, having forgotten that he was cleansed from his former sins. Therefore, brothers... Be all the more diligent to confirm your calling and election, for if you practice these qualities, you will never fall. Brotherly affection is the one that we're focusing on today, Chitty. Um, and if you haven't, if this is the first time listening, go back. All of these seven things that, that's listed that we're supposed to supplement your faith with, with, we've gone over. Lead us in brotherly affection. Yeah. So developing an intimate relationship with God should drastically impact how we love and treat others. Yeah. It should influence our mm. relationships. They should become deeper um, on a more vulnerable and transparent level. And without a doubt, you know, the most difficult thing to do as humans is to love something more than yourself. And that's just the God's honest truth. And even for believers, sometimes it's hard to love others more than you love yourself. And we live in this world and the human experience just in general, you know, it's this individualistic thought pattern of what's in it for me. What's best for me? How does this benefit me? Uh, but whenever we love someone and show the brotherly affection that God is calling us to in these verses, it's no longer about me. It's about serving others. It's that servant worship posture mm. of our hearts. And how can I advance the kingdom of God? How can I show and express the love of God to somebody else that may impact and influence their eternity? That's good. You know, and uh, Paul reminds us of this in Philippians 2, 3 through 4. It says, do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility, count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. So we see, once again, Paul reminds us that we naturally fall into this self-centered, you know, and operate out of this selfish ambition posture. It just comes natural to us. You know, we tend to focus on pushing our own agen agendas and advancing our, our own selves and glorifying our own selves. Hmm. Um, and how we combat this, right, is a posture of counting others more significant than yourselves. How can I serve somebody else? How can I put somebody else wants, needs and desires hmm. above my own? This type of radical love is a direct reflection of Christ in me. Mm. It is. And that can penetrate the hearts and minds of those around us. I remember, man, seeing even like even the men serving here when I was a student, like the love they were able to express and show to someone they didn't even know from Adam. And it wasn't just like the surface level love that like, oh, you work here, so you're supposed to love me and serve yeah. me and do. It was like this supernatural love that like. It, it exemplified Christ's love to me. Like, I didn't deserve to be loved in the manner in which you're loving me. Yeah. And it was so deep and profound that, like, I experienced a version of Christ's love through this man serving me, mm. you know? Um, and that draws you in. That pulls at your heartstrings. God uses the way we love and cultivate relationships with others so non-believers on the outside can see, man, there's something different about how that man loves. There's something different about how he expresses um, his care and concern and compassion for others. There's something intrinsically different about that. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. And, and I think it's also important, too, and I, and I really want you to touch on this, and maybe you plan to, but but you have to tie love into brotherly affection. But love's also one of these principles that we're going to talk about. Love is coming up. Love's at the end. And so I really want and, and I want to also be careful because we do have females that listen. Um, it, it's not – so when we say brotherly affection, I believe you could also say sisterly affection. Uh, and so what, I think what to break down would be affection. And – 
I have brothers, you have brothers, you have siblings. You have, is yet just your one sister? And so we, we have siblings, and so that love for a sibling, um, if you're in Christ, if you're in Christ, you're my brothers now as well. And that affection, I think, is what, how do you grow in that? How do you add that to your faith? Uh, what does that look like? I think you should first probably just talk about uh, affection, right? How am I to have or grow or add to my faith brotherly affection? Well, I mean, obviously, I have an older brother and a younger brother. We've talked about it many times in the pod. You're a middle child. I'm a middle child. We joked about punching up and having to punch down because we're getting attacked from both sides. But it's one of those things like, hey, man, if you – and, I mean, again, this is not the spiritual or the scriptural, but if you – if you're fighting my brother, you're fighting me. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just a done deal. If you come at my brother, you're coming at me. If you come at my sister, you're coming at me. And inside of that, there is an affection. Why? Because, man, I see them as a part of my family. I see them as a part of me, right? And so when I'm growing in this, i got to look at someone, and, and I, this is where, I, and I'm fleshing this out as we're talking. I yeah. haven't processed this. This is not, and I'm hoping you can help me process it. I believe he's talking about brothers and sisters in Christ. Maybe not. But if he is, if, 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 if I'm growing in my brotherly affection, people, the church with a capital C, the body of Christ, man, that's so needed right now. You know how much division in this world is happening inside the church, inside this nation, whether it be, man, these Christians, are, we're backbiting. We're, there's no affection for a brother or sister. There's no laying down of the life. There's no, hey, man, you said this about him. Well, I don't know him that way. And, and, and if that's true, I'm going to go talk to him, but I'm not going to believe you. That's my brother. I'm going to defend him until I can't anymore. And if that was our stance as believers, man, how much more united would we be? Instead of just trying to step on people's backs to climb some ladder that doesn't exist. We're on this place, we're on this earth, but a vapor, a mist of time, a two-second slice of pie. And then we're with God or not forever. Yeah. And so I think it's growing in this, man. I think what... A word that comes to my mind when it comes to brotherly affection is grace. Because people are dumb. (laughs) People do dumb things. I do dumb things. Christians do dumb things. Can I show the same grace to a brother or a sister in Christ as I've been shown by Christ? Yeah. And if that happens, man, if grace and patience happen, then I can work with, and this division would just be looked at and like, hey, you can't divide me. I'm showing him grace. Yeah, even if he did something dumb, that doesn't end his life. That doesn't end his career. There's repercussions. There's growth. There's maybe consequences for what happens. But there's grace, and that's my brother, and I have his back, and he has mine. And I think there's something to that because divide and conquer is a very successful tactic has been forever, yeah. and our enemy knows that. Look at the different denominations in the church, man. Churches are so divided. This is so weird. Not only, like, skin color, right? And I think that, that that's absurdity because heaven is going to be very colorful. Yeah. And I think churches that desire to have that are good churches. But also just other denominations. Like, hey, I can't be happy for a church that did 500 baptisms last year. Man, because it's not my church, because, man, maybe people are going there. It's just so weird. A, a, a united front is revival in this country, man, and it is very dangerous, and I think the enemy knows that, and I think the, I think the government honestly knows that, right? Yeah. Because there's division inside of that. <clears throat> yeah, and I think the mark of, like, a godly relationship as opposed to a secular relationship is what you said. It's grace and forgiveness, yeah. you know? I'm able, the lens that I view people through are through a christ-like lens and knowing that man this man or woman was made in the imago day in yes. the image of god and therefore how you treat someone how you love someone when you're viewing them through that lens is drastically different it's radically different um i'll say this we had a we get together sometimes as staff uh, we're trying to do it once a month we've been doing it over at tom's house and garrett said something that really struck me um I think it was a couple of times ago, and I think you were there, Carl, but he said, and I may, I'm paraphrasing the story, but in a sense it was, we like is because love is despite. God loves us despite. What, what he meant by that is like, 
I like people because, man, they do something for me. Mm. I like someone because we have things in common. I like someone because we enjoy the same things, you know. Love is despite. Whenever you wake up and you take care of your kids, whether they were rude, um, you know, proud, what they're selfish, wh- however they act, right? Yeah. It doesn't reflect how you treat them. You love them despite. Yeah. And I think that's something that really stuck to me. I may have botched that story, but it really spoke to me because love is that. Love is despite. Yeah. I'm not loving because if you're loving somebody because something Man, your love is going to be conditional. Your love is going to be temporary. Your love is going to be situational. But I'm loving despite because that's the manner in which God loved us. For while we were still sinners, Christ died died for for us. us. And therefore, I have to have that same view on others and loving others. And like you said, you think this is talking to believers. But even in a non-believer sense, man, we are called to express and show that same love for non-believers as well. Um, Go ahead. Yeah, you changed my... I believe my statement still stands because it's saying brotherly affection. Right. Now, here's the situation. All are God's creation, right? Imago Dei, image bearers. Not all are God's children. Correct. And so when we say brotherly affection, I, I, st- I stand on in Christ, a sibling in Christ. But, man, even as you were talking, it changed. That doesn't mean that we treat image bearers any different mm-hmm. because the hope and goal is the, the 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 great commission go out and make disciples of all nations baptizing them and if if i'm not a wicked person then every image bearer of christ my hope is that they long for christ that they know christ that they surrender their life to christ that they're saved so they're not separated from him forever and so that affection how am i i should look at them as though Man, they. I want you to be a brother. I want to show you the same affection that I show my brother. Amen. Look at I, look at how we treat each other, even in his darkest moment. And there's no examples of this um, in reality, but let's say like a public shaming, mm-hmm. a brother, a true brother in Christ falls. Man, watch how quickly his friends run away. Yeah, for real. Oh no, no, and try to separate themselves from him. Watch that. And I'm not saying that you don't have to have boundaries up because people have done some things that are very shameful. But, man, that person needs to know that you love them and you're there. Like, hey, man, you messed up. Own it. You own it? You repent? I got your back, man. I'm not going to put you up on this platform right here. I'm not going to do this certain situation for a minute because you need some time to heal. There needs to be some separation from a ministry or something like that. But, hey, man, I'm with you. And because you messed up doesn't define you. What defines you is the name of Jesus. And, man, I want to I want to love you well. I want to show you brotherly affection and be with you in the storm. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run into the storm. I'm not going to run away from the storm because that's what God's called us to do. Love people well. Love God. Love people. Right? I think that's Proverbs 17, 17. A friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. But it's like you're saying, man. It's loving a brother despite certain situations and circumstances that we find ourselves in standing alongside them, you know, calling them out when they're wrong, but also loving them through it yeah. and confessing sins to one another, um, rebuking one another, correcting one another and being open to receive these things as well. I think that can yeah. be difficult for us is to be willing to receive correction, be willing to receive, um, you know, um, love in a harsh manner sometimes, or I would say a harsh manner, but that correction that, Hey man, you're doing this wrong. You need to do this. Yeah. But yeah, man, um, like is because love is despite that just is something that sticks out to me so much. So when we can see others as image bearers of Christ, like you said, not, not sons and daughters, because unless you've accepted Christ, you aren't a son or a daughter, but they are, they do contain an image of God in them, yes. even despite that. Yes. And I think we underestimate the power of love and I'm going to define what love is in the next um, podcast. But like, the love that is shown to one who is lost can significantly impact his eternity, his or her eternity. Mm. It just can. And it's like, where is this love coming from? It is not of this world. It is yeah. so supernatural coming from a place that this world doesn't know that it draws you in. And God uses the love of Christians that we show to others, man, to glorify him, to reveal himself in the flesh 
to those around us like that love is so significant it's so powerful and it's so profound like i can't even put it into words mm. but i remember being in the darkest season of my life feeling like i deserve death i deserve darkness i deserve to suffer and, and i actually did probably so right but god and being loved at my lowest through those things blew my mind yeah. i couldn't make sense of it <laughs> and that's the, the beautiful thing about god's love is you can't make sense yeah. of it yeah you i can't remember the first time it. the first time that i saw that was god used someone ultimately as a shadow as a forecast to show me his love mm. his love amen but god used brett and i told this before mm. i was hit i had yes. stolen money from him uh, everyone around him said, Hey, what he needs is jail. You got to press charges. That's the only thing that's going to help. And he heard from the Lord that that wasn't the case. And he showed me undeserved grace. Mm. I was already preparing for the legal ramifications because I was hit, man. And he showed me grace. And that was, I always tell that. And that was really the first time that I, I understood. I'm sure my parents showed me grace all the time, my wife all the time. But that's when it was like, Oh, Mm. And it wasn't about Brett in that moment. I was here. I was at S2L. I was, a, I was a student. And it wasn't about Brett in that moment. It was about, oh. And God hit me with it and it crushed me. It was, it was amazing. Uh, let's take a quick break. When we come back, I want to hit on something. And I know you have more, but I want to touch on an aspect that I'm really bullish on and I think the world needs to become more bullish on and then kind of the opposite of that. And then I want to get Carl in yeah. as well. So let's take a quick break. We'll be back after a word from our sponsors. And we're back. It, this it's time to time stamp that cut that celebration. Champ out. is back, baby. There was a, there was a false start in the game and we're back. So we're back, back at brotherly affection. So here's something that I think, uh, and Carl, I'm going to get your response, but I want to hit both sides of this. And you already hit it. But one thing that I'm very bullish on, and it's very hard, and you almost have to be bullish on to make yourself do it. But a part of brotherly affection is confronting sin. Confronting sin Amen. in your brothers. Um, correcting. Hey, man, that's out of your character. Hey, man, that's not God-honoring. And I say that I'm bullish on it because it is so hard. Like, really, like, think about it. Think about someone, people at home, us in the room. Think about a situation right now, a brother in Christ, a sister in Christ that you love, and there's sin in their life, or there's something that you should, you need to confront them on, and you're just, and there's almost a cowardice to it. It's so uncomfortable. I don't want to go do that. I don't want to have this conversation. And what that is, as I believe the proverb that you quoted, that's like the friendship in you. If you go and have this conversation, it could affect, it could end the friendship. You, you think that of me? But man, a brother loving, having brotherly affection for someone, you call that out in a loving way because that's what we're called to do. Biblically, when you see an error, if you are offended by someone or something like that, their sin, you go to them one-on-one. -on -one. There's a process. You go and bring it up. Why? That's the beauty of brotherhood. Yeah. I can't see what's behind Ryan. I can see what's behind Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you meant. He can't see yes. what's behind Ryan. Yes. I can. Mm -hmm. And if I don't call it out, he may never see it. And think about the things that God is wanting to do in his life through him, for him, his family, anyone in his influence. And yet there's blind spots that he's not even paying attention to because a brother didn't come and tell him. Me coming and telling him, hey, man, that thing behind you, that you're comfortable with, that's dangerous, man. That's not your character. He's going to get ticked off about that potentially. But his response in our friendship shouldn't matter. Now, that's what I think the opposite to that. I, and I'm bullish on that. Please, the world is telling us to each his own. Uh, your truth is your truth. And that's horse manure. Okay? The truth will set you free. And there is an absolute standard of truth, and it's the Word of God. So please dismiss what things that are being told to you. And, and be bold. Be bold inside of this brotherly affection. Now, the other side of that in the area that I struggle with and I need to do better at, I've, I've really disciplined myself to be able to have awkward conversations because it was so hard and it was one of those things that's uncomfortable and I just had to be like, Adam, you don't love them if you don't do it. And mm -hmm. so I've gotten somewhat used to doing it and, and doing it in love and being okay if they get mad at me. Yeah. The other side of that is, man, a part of brotherly affection is we got to tell our brothers that we're proud of them. 
we got to tell them and, and illuminate when they're doing good, not not to, to raise them up, to, but just to be like, hey, man, look what God's doing in your life. Mm. Remind them. Uh, keep the things in front of them of like how God's being glorified in their life and how that makes you feel. That is also as important. Yeah. And I think I don't know people that do both of those things well or perfectly together. And and so that's an area that you just got to keep in front of you. If you're going to be someone who calls out your brothers and sisters, praise God, but you also need to lift them up. You also need to admonish them. You also need to let them know uh, that you see God moving in their life. And so that's something about brotherly affection. I think what you were saying brought that out in me. And mm. um, I don't always, I'm not always bullish, man. There's sometimes I dread conversations. Yeah, Like it's literally the last thing that I want to do is have this conversation. Uh, but normally I do them because I, I, I love the Lord and I love them as a brother. Um, I need to get better at admonishing and lifting people up and, and making sure that I, they know that I see that the way God's using them in a mighty way. And, and if they don't see it, show them. But Carl, step in here, man. What do you got on brotherly affection? Not what I thought I was going to have on brotherly affection. Mm. That kind of just shifted things, that last thing you were talking about. Um, I need to get better about having those hard conversations yeah. because, like, I hunger and I thirst for those hard conversations. Like, I hunger and I thirst for somebody to call me out of my stuff. And so you're excellent and really good at the other side, though. You're really good at showing and, and working with brothers mm. and letting them know how God's using them in the light. That's natural mm. and comfortable for you. So, sorry, go ahead. No, that's true. Yeah. Uh, thank, thank you for yeah. that. That's something the other side is something both of you guys have done in my life as brothers that I've experienced with both of you guys. And um, it's just, um, it's crazy how when you receive that, how much God can do with that. You know, if you really choose to receive what's being said and receive it as from Him then it allows him to do what he's trying to do. And yeah. uh, thank you guys for doing that in my life. Um, I guess the other thing I'll say about brotherly affection real quick is just how powerful that is when people on the outside see that. Yeah. Like when you go out bowling on the weekends yeah. with the guys and, and the world yeah. around you, like what the heck's wrong with these dudes? Like why are they hugging each other so much and why are they having so much fun? Yeah. And they can tell it's real. It's like, Brotherly affection is a powerful tool for, you know, the case gospel. In point, case in point of what he just said is so on key, but he said this, Chitty said this on the pod, the moment that he knew that freedom was real was in a time that brothers were being affectionate at the river on the canoe. Mm -hmm. Like God used brotherly affection, as you just said, Carl, to show him that this freedom is actually obtainable and real. And we were just, we were just, yeah, it was just out there being brothers, man, flipping canoes, splashing, looking at God's creation, enjoying it. Mm. When you're talking, I was reminded of Thursday, man, and gosh, we had a ridiculously powerful night. Did y'all go bowling afterwards? No, oh. but just your message was phenomenal. Spoke to Hold all. Hold on, can you say that again? Sorry, a little louder. All right. Well, he's ruining a, like a, a genuine, intimate moment with Hold that. On. But seriously, he preached a really good message, and uh, me, Carl, Travis, and Rick went out to eat at Nachos afterwards. We've done this a few times after the last few weeks. Catapults and. Man, just really good conversation, really good prayer, loving one another. So we go outside, and we've actually prayed for the owner the last couple of times we went there. Oh, What's cool. his name? Salvador. Salvador. And he's just got a joy and a light about his presence. Well, we're in the parking lot, and we're talking for a good while. And we get done praying, and we probably hugged each other 27 times at this point. And Salvador walked past us this way. We prayed for him. He walked back, and we're just still hugging, and we were joking. Like, he probably thinks we are some crazy Christian dudes just out here praying, loving each other, yeah. hugging each other multiple times. We hugged him like five times, but... It's that brotherly affection that comes from the Lord, and it's so deep. We left there on cloud nine. That's just cool, like, man. look how we put God in a box so often, so many times, and just the love that he produces and cultivates in a genuine relationship in brotherly affection with the men that you walk with and serve with and, you know, walk this life with gosh it was just man we left there just so filled up and that brotherly affection was just overflowing pouring out of us hmm. man so that's so interesting i almost can tie good fellowship from the four pillars mm. into brotherly affection yes 
Isn't that cool? Yes. Full circle. Because when y'all left there, and again, you guys are, are kind of beyond this phase, but when y'all left that parking lot with showing each other affection, having good fellowship, was there any sinful desires on your heart? None whatsoever. Just So what does the Word of God say? That you can escape the corruption that's in the world that comes mm. through sinful desires. desires. And if you grow in these things, you can you can escape those things. If you grow mm. in these things, you'll never fall. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. I'm really like, I'm not being a smart aleck. Right. I'm like, this is full circle stuff here. And it's like, okay, so the Word of God is the absolute standard of truth. We only proclaim that. We just prove that with a math equation. Mm. Not really a math equation, but a, a confession equation. That's pretty fired up, man. That's pretty good. You got any final thoughts? Man, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and spirit, and love your neighbor as yourself. Um, man, like I said, love is so profound. The way we love others is so profound and impacts the lives of everyone around us, Christian and non-Christian alike. God uses the way we love others to draw people closer to him, to come to know him. So don't ever underestimate the power of love and how we're treating others in our lives. And that's life after addiction. And you better believe it. Come on. Thank you for listening to this episode of Life After Addiction. Life After Addiction is a production of S2L Studio. For more Christ-centered addiction recovery resources, please visit s2l.net. That's S, the number two, L, dot net. For more information about S2L's licensed and accredited residential program, please visit s2lrecovery.org. That's S, the number two, lrecovery.org.